What's happening financial coaches? Peter here. I wanted to address something because I get a lot of questions about research and reading and I think it is kind of masking a different problem and I think you are better off doing something else. So basically the version of this question is, you know, uh, does anyone have any good articles on such and such a topic on getting married or uh, debt counseling or whatever it is, you know, or does anyone have a good research report on the effects of uh, loss of a job on family finances or whatever it might be. I mean, it, it just people looking for information. Hey, they've got this person, you know, they want to be prepared for them. Something came up, whatever it might be. There's a number of reasons that it might come up. But there is this tendency for people to, in my uh, experience, kind of race back to becoming an academic, right? Going and finding something to read because they think that is what's going to help them be equipped for the next time. I think what you are better off doing is a phrase we've heard a lot, practice makes perfect. And that is to get in there and actually just practice the craft. And I think you'll learn a lot about it, um, a lot about these situations and about how people have solved them. Um, you know, it's really fair to ask a participant, you know, have you had this problem before and solved it in a different way and, and questions like that. I think the other thing is if you are finding this a lot, you probably don't have enough uh, technical knowledge, a lot of product or service knowledge, you know, a lot of just kind of um, fundamental core financial educational uh, foundation to kind of give that information to people and so one of the things that I might suggest here because I think again practice makes perfect not necessarily research makes perfect but the way to give yourself more practice without being necessarily an expert yet is to partner up with someone who is and to be in those meetings with them. So whether it was when I started out with financial coaching or financial advising, what we did is a lot of shadow, a lot of associate work. So a lot of times I would go in with a veteran and you know, most of the time I'd just be kind of quiet. Sometimes the question would come to me. Sometimes I'd have something to, to add in. I would not inject myself into the conversation unless I really did have something to add. Some people just like hearing their voice. I would strongly advise against that because especially if it doesn't feel like it fits or if it doesn't add value, uh, you end up kind of becoming this obvious um, strange addition to the meeting. But if you are finding this more and more often as opposed to just going out and reading uh, about it, which I think the problem with it is, is that uh, reading about something usually will take one type of scenario, kind of craft that solution or offer up a solution, and then we try to use that, try to stretch it in ways that sometimes is not appropriate for the conversation that we're having with our participants or clients. And so what you need is that information, more information. You need to see experts who have more information applying that uh, appropriately in situations when they're working with people. And really the best way to do it is just see it in person. Now, I wish there were more videos online of actual coaching sessions. There are some mock sessions, which I don't know that are particularly helpful. Um, and even like role playing it, I don't know that's particularly helpful when it's not real. People tend not to, to, to uh, behave really uh, naturally in those or actually volunteer up real financial problems. So what I would say is that um, you know, if you can partner up with a veteran financial coach and just shadow them, work with them, uh, you know, go in as a colleague, I'll tell you how it's worked in the past with me is to say, hey, you know, this is my associate, whomever, and, uh, you know, she has a really uh, great ear for some of these types of problems or she's really experienced in this. And I don't know if we'll uh, kind of touch on that, but, you know, I would love for her to kind of weigh in and bring a new perspective to this. Or sometimes if they're really, really new, I just tell them, hey, this is someone who's in training, they're learning about this, uh, the work we do here and uh, kind of getting some real world experience. And, you know, I'm trying to get her or him trained up and, and eventually they will be uh, working with our clients as a financial coach and one-on-one. -on -one. And, and most people are just happy with that, you know, and, and most people like the idea that you are investing in some other people and also bringing more resources to bear on their problems. And so it's, it's a great opportunity to just see how the dynamic works, how people interact, how uh, coaches and advisors or counselors build trust with their people, you know, how often they're listening, how often they're offering up suggestions, you know, how much homework are they giving them, how much are they digging into their value structure, right? All these things we can kind of give you guidelines in training, but until you see it in, in real life, it's really hard to kind of take that and craft it and kind of understand the different scenarios where uh, sometimes you might offer a lot in terms of uncovering those underlying values. And sometimes you might not touch on it at all because it's really obvious to people. So it, it gives you, I think, more real world experience to take 
the information that you've learned and apply it. And I think you'll not only learn a lot of information, but the more uh, important parts of that is how to uh, use that effectively with people. Those are things you're not going to get from reading research papers or blog posts, those types of things. So yeah, just want to practice it, practice it, practice it. And if you can't, observe other people who are doing it. So um, the value of finding a partner or a mentor on this is really, really helpful. So maybe you're in a place where this isn't practical. You don't have any other financial coaches around. Maybe there are, but you don't know how to connect to them. Uh, you could certainly go on to some of the groups online, ask around, see if someone would be willing to do that with you. If they are doing video conference calls, this is probably even going to be a little easier because they would just add you in. And what will come up is, you know, them, their client, your picture, and, and all of that. And again, you can be pretty quiet in those types of things. And usually the good mentors or uh, leaders in that will often ask you a question. They'll just say, hey, Pete, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? You know, do you have any other, other ideas on budgeting that might be relevant? Or do you use any other apps uh, for this particular problem that you think might be really helpful? And if you throw that in and you do have <laughs> good answers, uh, you know, even though you might not be injecting a lot in terms of um, overall volume into the conversation, it might be really important things. And those things register with clients saying, hey, it was helpful to have that person in there. And thankfully, they sat through the whole 45, 55 minute meeting uh, and even only spoke for a minute or two, but it was really valuable. And so I, I got a lot of value for someone investing an hour uh, in caring about my situation. So um, really find a, find a mentor if you can and just get out there and practice and learn from the real world experience as opposed to a learning just on paper. Those are my tips. All right, guys, hopefully that helps you continue to go out there and change lives, including your own. See you later.